Welcome to Money Hangout. In our weekly interaction, we help you learn about mutual fund. We discuss, you know, all your savings and investment issues. And uh, uh, this is brought to you by Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Uh, every week we talk about a particular issue, and then we take your questions about that. Uh, today we are going to talk. I'm going to talk about, you know, investing to save taxes, and uh, of course taxes in the air right now everybody is trying to figure out uh, the you know the, the the impact of demonetization which is primarily being done to you know curb black money uh, the people and uh, th this is not going to be the focus of our discussion today uh, it's important to understand that you can earn you can pay taxes and you can also reduce your tax payment uh, by making some legitimate investments and most in individuals are allowed to do that we are going to keep our you know uh, focus on this how you can save taxes by making investment and uh, government you know our income tax laws permit that if you are earning uh, say about 5 lakh rupees and so you are allowed to save make an investment of 1 and a half lakh rupees under section 80c and for calculating your taxes this one and a half lakh rupees investment made in a financial year is deducted from your income for calculating taxes. So for taxation purpose, your income will be considered as three and a half lakh rupees. If you make this one and a half lakh rupees investment in the designated investment, in the in the investments which are permitted and you know notified by the government. I'll talk you talk to you about the alternatives. Broadly speaking, you know, if we have to classify all the investment avenues, there are four of them. There are four four kinds. One is the fixed income alternatives. Uh, you invest in those, your, and your money is logged in for a certain time period. Amount of up to one and a half lakh rupees made in those is exempt from taxes. The biggest of this is, is, is the employee provident fund. Your provident fund deduction made by your employer is an eligible tax, uh, you know, tax deductible investment. Uh, that's one. Uh, I would not say tax deductible, but deductible income, so to say. Uh, so, employee provident fund, your provident fund contribution of any kind is the first one, is the most popular and is the mandatory one, quite understandable. Then comes the PPF. This is also very popular. So, and these are all fixed income alternatives. Public provident fund from which your interest, it's a 15 year scheme. You have to invest regularly. You are, it's expected that you'll be investing at least some amount every year. And you can invest up to one and a half lakh rupees and they take their deduction. Uh, this used to be a very pop. This used to be the most popular tax saving investment for a different reason. The reason was that, you know, uh, it was it is the oldest tax saving. The income from PPF was considered to be uh, was completely tax free. And then uh, if you uh, it, it and they use it used to yield very high return earlier. Uh, but today I am confident that, you know, with the declining interest rate as the, you know, the return on the interest on PPF is also on a decline. You will not be able to make something meaningful by contributing regularly in PPF. It is popular because of two, three reasons. One is that uh, it is very widely available and distributed and it is, and it is completely safe uh, because it's a, you know, a government sponsored scheme. Uh, and earlier it also used to yield very high return. And the market was not democratized then. If it was, it was not possible for common investors to invest in mutual funds or you know market-linked investment at that particular time period. Likewise, also, uh, there was a special tax benefit available to public provident fund. You could invest up to fifty thousand rupees till two thousand five, which was exclusive to that, and you could invest only ten thousand rupees in mutual fund. So uh, by, by its very design, the tax incentive was treated towards PPF and that led to its popularity. That carries on and I think it is not a very productive investment anymore. But for historic reason, for its legacy, for its background, uh, our parents do tell us that carry on with your PPF. It is, uh, and, and safety, nobody is doubting. But I don't think you will be, it, you will, it will be the most rewarding tax saving investment and you should reconsider that if you are on with that uh, then comes then comes you know uh, 
the NSC and and the five-year bank deposit, which which was also classified or you know notified as the tax-saving alternative. So these are the fixed income alternatives. Then you have the hybrids. Uh, hybrids are also very popular. A lot of people actually may pay their insurance policy buy an insurance policy, pay their annual premium, and it is a deductible uh, income. Uh, so uh, they are very popular because they are sold very aggressively. And it is not a very desirable thing because insurance is important. You should buy insurance. You should buy insurance objectively the moment you have in financial dependence. But you should not consider look at it as an investment. When you combine insurance and investment, you don't get either of the two. And when the primary motivation is tax saving, you don't even evaluate anything objectively. So, the, so I m my sense is that you know take a stock of all the insurance linked endowment policies or unit linked insurance policies that you may have consider exiting that buy your term plan clean up your act and the premium paid even for the term plan is a deductible income so that that benefit doesn't go away and the advantage of buying a term plan is that you will be paying a small premium to get a very large coverage which will be meaningful uh, then comes an all equity option today you have an all equity option which is a mutual fund it is also called ELSS. You can invest up to one and a half lakh rupees in them. Uh, when I'm listing these alternatives and referring to one and a half lakh rupees, it doesn't mean that you can invest one and a half lakh rupees here, there, and all that. In your account, you can invest only up to one and a half lakh rupees every year. And it has to be any of it or a combination of it, but your annual investment can't exceed one and a half lakh rupees for that benefit. You have the equity link savings scheme. Uh, you invest here. These, these investments are locked for three years and then uh, and, and this is a, an all equity portfolio generally and uh, all the returns that you derive from it so when you invest it is a deductible uh, income it grows and there is no tax to be paid and when you derive it when you when you realize it whenever you do uh, it's entirely tax free because it is an equity investment and equity in India held for over one year is completely tax free. So this turns out to be the most rewarding investment option. Uh, one, because it is 100% equity and returns from equity is completely tax free. Coupled with the tax saving tax break that you get. Uh, then, then there is a fourth thing of, for which you may not have a choice. If you're you know, struggling to save uh, the tuition fee paid for two kids in a year is, is also a deductible income. So you can, you can well add that if you're, you know, somehow managing to save uh, and struggling to save, then that, that comes in as a very handy tax break. So these are the four alternatives. Uh, I would like you to, uh, I would like to urge you to consider these options very objectively. Don't go by my word. If you are looking for, you know, a long term investment to accumulate into something meaningful, go with the ELSS. If you're a very conservative investor, planning to you know and you plan to retire and you have something very targeted after five years or three years you want you plan to retire then you should go then you should consider the fixed income option if you are struggling to save by all means take the benefit of that uh, the the tuition fee waiver that you get uh, there is one more thing which has happened in last couple of years which is extra investment of more than one and a half lakh rupees up to fifty thousand rupees in NPS is an eligible investment it also qualifies for this deduct, you know deduction from your income and uh, NPS is, is relatively better off it's a transparent thing it is a low cost thing uh, but there are a couple of advantages if I if I compare two situations that you invest 50,000 rupees in NPS then you have to keep investing 60,000 rupees the money will be logged in till your retirement 60% of your money will be converted into an annuity 40% you can derive and uh, so it's a compromise on liquidity and the income from that is taxable when i compare that 50000 rupees investment in in nps which is deducted from your income as compared to a person in the highest tax bracket assuming that he pays tax on the 50000 rupee which he was planning to invest in in uh, nps which means you pay 15000 rupee tax and you are left with only 35000 rupees for any 10 10 year period if you invest 35,000 rupees after paying taxes, net of taxes every year, your money in ELSS or, a, or an equity fund 
will accumulate into far larger amount because NPS cannot invest in with your NPS account. You can't have more than 50% allocation to equity. That apart, it will come with all the catch, all the riders that you have to hold your investment till 60. You a part of that money must be converted into annuity. So uh, given the riders, I think ELSS turns out to be a great thing even here uh, or, or any equity fund for that matter, because you can put your money. The money will be completely free from any lock in. All the returns will be tax free. So even that NPS thing is a good thing. But it is not it is not great if you happen to be a, a very disciplined investor. And I'm hoping that all the people talking to us right now or listening to us right now will be disciplined investors. They'll be, you know, uh, taking uh, making a choice uh, thoughtfully and uh, they'll be sticking to their plan. So if you can stick to your plan, you are a thoughtful investor. You will be investing regularly that thirty five thousand rupee after paying taxes. You will be much better off and the scale of being better off is you know 50 percent allocation to equity as compared to 100 percent allocation i expect a four percent annual incremental higher return which will translate into something very meaningful in 15 20 years time frame